Welcome back to Sahara TV. My name is Rudolph Okonkwo. Two weeks ago, the Nigerian National Assembly approved an anti-gay marriage bill that if signed into law by President Jonathan, will impose 14 years in prison for anyone engaged in any gay activity. The bill is supported by many Nigerians, especially various religious groups in the country. Joining us to discuss the law is Archbishop Ignatius uh, Kigama, who is the Archbishop of Jos and the Chairman of the Plateau State Interreligious Committee for Peace. Archbishop Kigama, welcome to Sahara TV. Thank you. Uh, let me start by asking you, what will Nigeria gain by signing this law into, this bill into law? Well, they gain respectability, um, gay marriage, or what they call same-sex marriage. As far as we are concerned in Nigeria, is an unnatural practice. Any culture in Nigeria, and there are many, would tell you that same-sex marriage or union is totally unacceptable, it's unnatural, and uh, it's a disorder. So um, religious groups, ethnic groups, cultural groups would definitely uh, fight against this law. And that is what is happening right now, that the law should not be passed and uh, there should be no room for same-sex marriage in Nigeria. But sir, who do you think is behind uh, the move to get same-sex couples to get married in Nigeria? Is it because for people who are watching events in Africa, or even for those who are against the bill, they are saying that there was no move to have them get married in Nigeria. Is this a preemptive action? Well, I know some few lawmakers have voiced their opinion in support of gay marriage and a few non-governmental organizations. And we believe that these people are being teleguided. Mm. They are being funded from abroad because mm. somehow it appears that it's the normal thing in most parts of the West, mm. in Europe and America. So they believe Nigeria being one of the largest in Africa, if not the biggest, with the biggest population in Africa, um, they feel this should happen there. It is not something generated by Nigerians. It's something coming from outside, and I, either from government or from very powerful non-governmental organizations. Mm. So, so the people who are sponsoring this are from outside the country, sponsoring the drive towards gay marriage. And also the people who are opposed to this seem to also be getting sponsorship from outside. So is Africa turning into another battleground between these two different groups? Well, um, Africa has always been uh, a land where there is fierce competition, either the economic political or even religious level. It is not surprising if you have sponsors from outside who are advocating for gay marriage and you also have groups from outside who say no. But I think our opposition to gay marriage is based on our cultural roots, mm. that this is just something that judge from the point of view of culture is not acceptable. Judge from the point of view of our culture is not acceptable. And then when you add the dimension of religion, it's more, much more unacceptable. So it's not necessarily what others are uh, sponsoring from outside that is helping us to oppose this law. It's just that based on our natural instincts, our cultural values, our biblical or religious injunctions, it is just not right. Mm. So, Archbishop, I believe that you believe that Africa has some exceptionalism going on there, that there are certain things that even if the rest of the world are embracing, that Africans are opposed to it. Yes. It doesn't mean that what the rest of the world, especially the West, accepts is right. It doesn't mean it's always right. Mm. For long or too long, we have been made to believe that whatever comes from the West is correct. Mm. Even our young people try to dress 
in modes that portray Western culture, and uh, they believe that values that come from the West have to be accepted uh, very, you know, just without discernment. Mm. But uh, you know, we have our values. We have our African religion, even, uh, not to talk of Christianity or Islam that we now practice. Mm. Um, it's just that right is right, and what is wrong is wrong. Mm. What is unnatural is unnatural. Mm. What is un, uh, dishonorable, in our view, is dishonorable. So this is just the reality. Mm. So those who oppose uh, this, this uh, bill are saying that a place like South Africa, they've had uh, same-sex marriages going on for years, that nothing has, has uh, turned upside down there. They ask, why is it that if it happens in Nigeria, it's going to be the end of uh, life as we know it? Well, Nigeria is a very deeply religious country, and we still treasure our cultural uh, values. And um, uh, while we are ready to accept positive values that come from outside, we totally resist ones that destroy who we are and what we stand for. I can tell you if South Africa is practicing that, it's not because the indigenous population of South Africa wants to practice that. It's something that comes from somewhere. Mm. These are just... Um, you know, values that come from elsewhere and they are forced into it and there is just no way out. But here in, uh, in Nigeria, we are still a religious people and we hold on dearly to our cultural values and we wouldn't let them be contaminated or polluted. Mm. Now, His Holiness, uh, Pope, Pope Francis, considers gay marriage as a step backward. Uh, but, but he said that if there is private union, then three parties and the society aren't uh, affected. Will you be okay to have something like civil union that they have in some parts of the West where they refuse to uh, allow gay marriages? Civil union between a man and a man, a woman and a woman, for us is just out of the question. We prefer the natural thing, which is the man marries the woman, the woman marries the man, that is our definition of marriage. Mm. Once you begin allowing civil union, is one step to allowing a full-scale uh, uh, legal marriage and the practice becomes widespread and so on. Mm. For us, it's just not acceptable. It's rather we restrict ourselves to one man, one woman, one woman, one man. That is what we understand by marriage from our cultural point of view and from even our religious point of view. Mm. Now, because you mentioned America and the West, and in the context that they are trying to export this to Africa, I want to, I want to quote a statistic here that says that 10 years ago, 65% of Americans were against gay, gay marriage, but today about 41% are now against. So, so over a period of 10 years, there was a reduction on the number of people who oppose gay marriages. Uh, do you fear that such thing could happen in, in Africa too, in Nigeria, that over time that people, there will be more and more people who will be open to considering this? Yeah, with the power of the media that comes from the West, it is not impossible that that should happen because the media is so strong. When they advertise something as beautiful, as good, and do it over and over, then it is very easy for the younger generation to catch on to it and believe it's the best. I tell you that our young people look up to the West for a lot of things they, they, they use and uh, they want to live. So I don't doubt the fact that with constant repetition and constant uh, portrayal of same-sex marriage as something modern and something of uh, great value, yeah, you will get young people here who would buy into that quite easily. Mm. But uh, for now, I tell you, both young and old see same-sex marriage as unnatural, as just not uh, compatible to our African culture. Mm. Now, let me, let me tell you, uh, uh, the Archbishop, the, in Uganda, lawmakers once considered a death penalty 
that, that people who are in gay activities should be executed. And in 2011, a Ugandan newspaper had this front page story titled, Hang Them. And it showed a picture of one of the gay activists called David Kato. Uh, soon after, he was actually killed, beaten and to death on the street of Uganda. Are you concerned that this idea of um, uh, kind of putting gay rights, gay activists in this light with this law, that it might lead to people being killed? Well, they're not, not just uh, this orderly application of, of uh, justice. No, it has to be an orderly application of justice. If the law says you are engaged in this practice, you get a jail term, that should be complied with. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to jungle justice, whereby you find somebody in this practice and then you start to harass or try to violently attack the person. That, again, also is uh, illegal and not acceptable. Mm -hmm. So we would hope that this law will be applied in the most civilized way possible without uh, resorting to jungle justice. Um, OK, let me, let me ask you, because one of the arguments that people who oppose this law make is that it's going to destroy marriages. And, uh, you know, people on the other side are saying, if polygamy did not destroy marriages, w how will gay marriage destroy marriages? Of course, the difference is obvious. One marriage which is gay is not open to procreation. It's just a man and a man, or a woman and a woman, and that is it. Mm. There, it is no open to procreation. Whereas marriage involves man and woman, uh, being companions, being partners, and that relationship opens them up to receiving the gift of a child. Mm. The child grows up and there is a family. The family is part of the society. The society is part of the nation and that kind of thing. Mm. So um, polygamy, on the other hand, yes, there is a multiplicity of um, relationships in polygamy, but uh, there is still an openness to procreation, mm. that children are born, and if you have a good practice of polygamy, you would in fact find out that there is so much that can be learned from that practice. Mm. I am a Christian, I only encourage monogamy, but I grew up in a polygamous setup, and in my village there are many polygamous families, and they are very orderly, they are very community-centered, rather than being self-centered. They share easily. They are ready to uh, help one another more easily than those who uh, are not polygamous. Mm. So in a polygamous family, you find real values, uh, even though there are problems and complications. But, but uh, I think it is not wise to compare polygamy and same-sex marriage. These mm. are two different things. Mm. One is is for food is not open to procreation. The other is mm. one is self-centered union. The other one is a union that uh, generates community and gives mm. to society better. Mm. Now the other comparison that has been made is that in, in, in ten years ago there was this move to have Sharia law in, in some northern states in Nigeria. And people read it to mean that imposing a law based on what the people who are pushing for it believe are in their holy book, uh, that it wasn't fair to minority groups in those states. Now, there, there is a comparison being made that this is another example of people, uh, majority in this case, imposing laws against minority groups, which is uh, the people who are for gay rights. W what do you say to that? Well, the... Um the Sharia was not accepted by everybody in Nigeria. Only a few wanted that legal system to be upheld. Even the present battle we have with the Boko Haram is all related to that. They want to Islamize the nation and want to uh, make Sharia as the constitution of the nation. That is not being allowed because it's fictional and it's not uh, serving the interests of everybody. So a law that does not guarantee the common good should not be applied. Mm. Whether it is a religious law, economic law, political law, whatever it is, it shouldn't be allowed. Mm. And in this case, 
the same sex marriage violate our cultural values and as I said, it's even from the point of view of nature, it doesn't just, you know, show, it doesn't, um, you know, connect mm. that um, a man and a woman will live together for life. Um, it doesn't just tell, mm. you know, so, so we, we are totally not in several of that. Mm. Now, Archbishop, you are the chairman of the Plateau State Interreligious Committee for Peace. Uh, how is the the Boko Haram situation in the north? Have we seen any improvement since the declaration of the state of emergency in three states? Well, yes, I understand that a lot of progress has been made. You know, their hideouts have been dug out. There's a lot of assault on both uh, Boko Haram activists. I would say something positive is, is happening. And uh, I want to say this should have taken place long ago because when the Boko Haram issue came up, the, people, the government was rather hesitant in responding decisively. And this gave birth to the increasing violence. And now, well, some decisive measures have been taken, and we are hoping that with more of these measures coordinated and uh, with security given top priority, I think it will be possible to uh, ensure the defeat of Boko Haram in northern Nigeria. Mm. I, I know that from reports that the church, different churches sustained a lot of uh, the, the damages and destruction in, in, in the north. Do you think uh, it, it's possible to rebuild after if there is a defeat of Boko Haram? Boko Haram yet, yes, did inflict a lot of damages to property as well as life. And remember that their target primarily was the church. They wanted to eliminate Christianity and replace it with Islam. Uh, many have suffered as a result of this. Many are dead, some are wounded, and lives of, means of livelihood have also been destroyed. Um, the government was talking about amnesty to Boko Haram, and there was a big outcry because you don't give amnesty to criminals. And if you must consider amnesty, you give amnesty to those who are repentant. And also, along with that, you must consider the victims of this uh, uh, crime, the victims, those who have been destroyed and wounded and they have lost their property. Amnesty must go hand in hand with ensuring that justice is done and compensation is adequately uh, made to these people who have been victims of Boko Haram violence. Mm. Now, Archbishop, you, you are in Plateau State. It's the middle center of the country. And the, the struggle against Islam and, and Christianity has been, that has been the center point for many years. Do you see what the government is doing today as a long-term solution to the problem? Or do you think there is another way to deal and, and settle this issue permanently? Well, some little efforts have been made, but not enough. I have always said that the solution is not more military men on the street or soldiers or policemen on the street. It's not about having more guns and so on. It's about uh, education you know, the, the, the conversion of heart, that these two major religions, Christianity and Islam, have so much in common, they have so many values in common, instead of targeting the vices of society, the problems that sometimes like ignorance, diseases, and, and other immoral issues, they are busy fighting. I feel that um, uh, they are, we are misdirecting our energy, our religious energy. And therefore, the government and the authorities have a duty to create a conducive environment for uh, peaceful coexistence and mutual understanding. Um, with, because of this crisis, you find a city is polarized, that Muslims are on this side, Christians are on that side, the young people cannot play together anymore, there is hatred, there is suspicion, there is negative indoctrination in families, in schools and religious places. It is totally wrong. It's just not helping Nigeria. So we hope that 
the government and the relevant authorities would ensure that um, there is a radical uh, program of transformation of heart, that people will just learn to be their brother's keepers, learn to see that religion is not just about your narrow religious group, but about humanity, how to love, how to care for others, how to be honest with others. I think this is so important. Otherwise, our religious practices just become mere empty practice. Um, we need to translate into practice the values of our religion, which the summary is love your God, love your neighbor as yourself. Mm. Now, um, some who have looked at this uh, situation, they've questioned, they asked the question, where in the world do you have this kind of divide that we have in Nigeria that have been able to achieve peace? So do you, do you see a country in the world with the kind of divisions we have in Nigeria that we could say this is a model, this is how they were able to establish a kind of cohesive existence that you could recommend? Yes, I am sure there are some countries where Muslims and Christians live happily and peacefully together and exploit the positive values of their religion to bring socioeconomic or political progress you have them. It's just the brand, I don't know, the brand of Islam or Christianity that we have that insists on, I am better than you. That is the problem. And this fanatical spirit, I don't know where we are importing it from. Certainly it's not part of our nature. It's not in our character as Nigerians to fight and kill and destroy in the name of religion. Mm. This is, again, uh, coming from somewhere. Religion should be about mutual uh, coexistence and harmony and promotion of love and the common good and all that is good for humanity. This is what religion should do. But somehow you get some radical elements, both in Islam and Christianity, that would not concentrate on the task of building a better world and hoping for uh, heaven after this world. They just are interested in violence and destruction. This mm. is totally uncalled for. And um, we don't know where it is coming from, but definitely there, uh, there are some groups internally and externally who are responsible. They just enjoy seeing blood. They mm. enjoy seeing chaos, anarchy. They just enjoy disorder. And this is just the case. Mm. And they are ready to spend money to create this situation of disorder, mm. which is totally unuseful to anybody in Nigeria. Okay. Uh, Archbishop, one last question. Um, the other day, His Holiness Pope Francis said that those who do not believe in God, who do good things, that they are going to go to heaven. And um, not long ago, Desmond Tutu said that, that, that God is not a Christian. Do you see, do you have that kind of encompassing uh, approach to, to religious life, the way these two religious leaders uh, presented it? And do you think that such, such an expansive uh, view will help uh, deal with some of the extremism that you were talking about now? Well, God, you don't, if you limit God to being Christian, Muslim, or whatever, you are reducing his power. God is almighty. God is the maker of heaven and earth. So you don't reduce him to a culture or a religious denomination. He is God, almighty. That is the import, important thing. In our Christian theology, we believe that those who do good go to heaven, and those who do bad receive a punishment for it. And um, we, we also believe that in Christianity, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. That if you come through Jesus, you inherit eternal life easily. That does not mean that others who practice other religions cannot go to heaven. We believe that when they do good, they exercise their conscience in a way that is positive, and uh, they obey natural laws and even the laws of their religion that makes you love your neighbor and love doing good for others. You go to heaven. But we believe as Christians that the shortest cut to heaven is through Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life. So while not um, condemning others of different religions, we believe that they should come and join us as Christians because Jesus provides the most rapid, the shortest, and the most effective way to salvation. This is our conviction. And if you have that belief, you are ready to embrace everybody. The Pope is saying, look, do good, and you are a good human being. You go to meet God. We don't just become too fanatical to say, look, you cannot see God because you are not a 
Catholic, they are not a Christian. No, a Muslim, a Buddhist, a Hindu who is good will see God. But we say to see that God better come through our Christian religion and the way is easier and more effective. This is how we see it and we embrace everybody as made in the image and likeness of God. So no need to look down on your neighbor and no need to cause unnecessary pain and terrible destruction to your neighbor because he or she does not belong to your religious cycle. All right. Thank you, Archbishop uh, Kigama, for talking to us today. You're uh, welcome. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. That was the Archbishop of Jos and the chairman of the Plateau State Interreligious Committee for Peace. When we come back, we are going to continue our programming, and I hope you'll stay tuned and keep watching. Thank you.